we mix the story of the of my family together with the story of the wine so we make a unplanned um, so as uh, I think everybody know the main activity of my family is the textile we in the textile business from uh, over 100 years and uh, so we enter the wine uh, business for passion uh, the in the um, 82 my father uh, went to live alone and buy a house Cascina Palazzo with a small vineyard and he started to make his own wine at, at that time was called Edoardo Miroglio Agri Azienda Agricola because here the agricultural uh, comp the agricultural company is called Azienda Agricola in that moment he was making only one wine and uh, another producer was selling to him Barolo uh, it, it was like a game in that uh, place he also had horses and was like a, his, uh, relaxing place after in the 85 he had the occasion to take over a very historical winery that was Tenuta Carretta uh, Tenuta Carretta was belong to Veglio's family uh, a, a family of uh, a real estate owner that was managing the winery for 50 years but in that moment they have some troubles because of one of their business and they decide to sell some of the properties and Carretta was one of these um, the occasion to buy a so ancient and so important winery was uh, something that happened once every 100 years I don't know so my father immediately say asked to my grandfather to take and uh, there was a big um, a big uh, discussion because my grandfather wanted my father involved in the textile business. So my father bought the winery, but he promised to never manage it. And the manage was given to the to the husband of, of the sister of my father. So the the passion of the, for the wine stay for around ten years silent. So we we bought this company. We start to manage, make new vineyards, make the new winery. The, the new production side, side the new seller. Um, but my father was not involved directly. Um, after in the in the in the same period was a very interesting it was the 80, 80s in the 85 was a very interesting period for the wine in Piemonte because in the 86 there was a big the, there was a big scandal of metanolo. So many many producer was uh, making sophistication of wine, uh, things that happened also in Bulgaria in the past, and uh, so they was with one liter of wine make ten bottles. Uh, in the '86 uh, there was this scandal, so this everything come out because some people uh, get sick from this uh, fake wine, and so there was a big cleaning on the wine on the wine in Piemonte and the estate quality estate like Carretta have a big occasion to rise because before they was considered expensive because they was making real wine and nobody know that the fake wine was uh, was uh, fake but when this come out and many fake winery being went on court the the, the real estate like Carretta became uh, uh, very strong and we had the very good luck because we bought in the 85. So the next year the market uh, opened a lot. In the same time there was uh, a, a, a new wine coming out that was Roero Arnaise. Before of the 80s Roero was in, uh, Arnaise was impossible to be vinificated or as well more, very hard to be vinificated because it was not a stable wine. But from the, with the new technology in the 80s there comes the uh, cold vinification. So it's po the possibility to make the vinification keeping cold uh, the tank. And this permits a very good vinification of the Arnaise. And the Arnaise was one of the main important wines for Tenuta Carretta, today called Cayega. And uh, so we, we enter in the wine business in the right moment with the right company. You know? And we start to, to grow in this. Uh, after the, in the 99, my father moved to start to invest in Bulgaria for the textile and uh, fall in love with the history of the Bulgarian tradition of the wine, a 5,000 years tradition, because uh, that is much older than what we have here in Italy, actually. And um, he started to taste the local variety and to explore. And in 2001, he decided to invest in Bulgaria for the wine. 
And so he started to he look around Bulgaria for a site that had the right condition in climate and in terroir. And defined the two, two perfect situations. One, one was the Lenovo and the other one was Isar. Um, after in the Isar was not uh, possible to find uh, a plot of land, to put together a plot of land, because uh, in Bulgaria there, is, there was this uh, uh, law to divide the land, no? and so it was very hard to put together a big estate. Instead, in, uh, in uh, Elenovo, we start with, we can buy in one moment uh, 20 hectares, and from there we start to buy small, small pieces, and with uh, 100, uh, with 1,800 acts, we put together our uh, 1,000 hectares and so the 150 hectares that today is dedicated to the vineyards. Um, the, the task was to improve the tradition and the terroir of Bulgaria with Italian know-how and international variety. So we start to plant both uh, local, like Mavrou, de Melnik, Rubin, and Bouquet, and as well international, especially the Pinot Noir, because the climate of the, of the Elena region is uh, perfect for the Pinot Noir variety, because there is a big uh, uh, temperature change between night and day. Uh, not too much humidity, very windy, so the, the condition, the perfect condition for this variety. Uh, and um, in the and we make the first harvest in the 2004. It was really like a, a bet because uh, uh, from Italy nobody thinks that uh, we can uh, make uh, quality wine in Bulgaria. In that moment, Bulgaria still don't have a lot of uh, quality producer. And that was still so-so uh, wine. What we again we had a hit of luck because uh, in the same moment we start to invest, also other wineries start to invest on the quality, and so they start to divide between, uh, uh, let's say, industrial low quality winery and uh, estates that uh, I, the target to make uh, high quality wines. For example, Terra Tangra in that moment was one of the main competitor, and. Um, and so we start to have a, a market for quality wine, both in Bulgaria and on the export market. Um, then in 2006, my, there was a big uh, family shake in our family, and uh, we separate our business from the sister of my father. And uh, so his um, husband was uh, sent away from Carretta, and uh, we take again the direction of Carretta. And uh, we start to build up our group that to, today is called Terra Mirolio, that put together the uh, Italian winery and the Bulgarian winery. Uh, they, because they have different terroir, different uh, variety of wine, but the common uh, um, key point. So the, the philosophy to uh, produce quality wine starting from the terroir, and, uh, but also following the, the both our uh, um, taste and the market taste, so to don't be close in uh, ourselves, but very open on the needs of the market. And uh, these two things: to promote the terroir, uh, show, uh, try to put all what the terroir can give the wine. So you are trying Roero Ornés here. You are trying our um, our flagship. So we had a walk through the vineyards and uh, we saw the bunches so from, uh, from, uh, from the fields to the glass. Uh, this is a 2013 uh, vintage. This wine is uh, fresh so no aging in wood at all. Uh, so you need to consume uh, uh, within a year or two years from the harvest to preserve the freshness. Um, Roero Arnaise is, uh, is a great, is a small appellation, but very important to us, to our region. Uh, it's a DOCG wine with a given name. Uh, Callega is a cliff near Portofino. So we named, uh, we named our Callega Arnaise uh, uh, after uh, a region in Portofino, in Liguria. Uh, also uh, to show how close we are to Liguria geographically. Uh, actually, the hills are a continuation of the, of the Appennino from Liguria, 
that fades down to, to the Lange and Rare region. Um, so this wine is uh, really fruity, uh, fruity and uh, um, flower. So you have fruit and flower in your nose, uh, white uh, fruit, uh, like banana, uh, like uh, pear, for instance, and also uh, acacia, acacia, uh, white, um, um, white flowers in your nose. And uh, it's kind of savory, so a little bit of minerality and saltiness. Uh, so in the end, it's a really fresh wine uh, that goes uh, really well as an aperitif or with the uh, first courses or white meats. It's a wine that uh, that is very flexible. So and uh, we are we are very successful with it in the national and international market. Even if it is a small appellation, it's kind of. Uh, Doing really well. I'm a very big Pinot Noir drinker and uh, actually I start to drink Pinot Noir at home because when uh, I, I start to drink wine in 2004 and uh, my first wine was our Pinot Noir and I get uh, and I fall in love and uh, as well uh, I like um, mineral fresh whites like for example our uh, Cayega because the Roero region is uh, was uh, covered in the sea from the sea 300,000 years ago so there is still a lot of, of minerals in the soil that gives a lot of minerality to the wine and this this kind of uh, whites with a lot of minerals I like a lot not only arnais many many varieties a, a, a nice question um, the, the, f the first point is the, the, the grape, because Nebbiolo grape, that is uh, the grape of Barolo, is, very, um, is taking very a lot from the land. So if you plant Nebbiolo in different position, you will have very different wine. Uh, and this is the reason because in, in Barolo, Barolo area, there is a crew, so hills that make special wines, like for example uh, Cannubi. Canubi not only is uh, famous for his quality, but also famous for his history. Because in the 860, there was, here was produced a wine Canubio that was considered the ancestor of, of Barolo. And uh, here also uh, the Count of Cavour, that is actually who invented the Barolo, like a wine, planted his vineyard exactly here. So you have a, a, a technical reason to be important place that is gave by the terroir and by the microclima, particularly good for the grape, a, a historical reason and as well a geographical reason because this is the door of Barolo. This is the first vineyard that you find while you enter in Barolo region from Alba. So everybody that come in this region go to Alba and after move to Barolo. And this is the first vineyard they meet. And so it became the mo the considered the most important vineyard of the Barolo area because of his uh, quality, because of his history and because of his position. To be honest, there is many very interesting crew, like, for example, Monfortino or, or, or Cerecchio, that is the other hill in front of us. More than 100 uh, uh, official crew. And every one has his own uh, particular uh, things, particularity. Uh, it's hard to say which one is best because every people have different taste. So everybody can find the, their four favorite uh, crew. But this is one of the most important.